Well, I, I think all of us are deeply concerned about the decline in discourse in our politics and in our public life. It's not only that we've, we've moved from being high value to sort of low value and appealing to, to more prurient interests. It's the fact that we're weaponizing words to, in order to destroy or de discredit our political opponents. People are no longer considered rivals in politics, they're, they're considered enemies. And you use very different kind of rhetoric in that. And I don't want to be partisan about this, but the truth is, some of this started before Donald Trump became president, but the truth is, he has also introduced or knocked over the norms of his president. And, and a speaker is supposed to be telling the truth and have facts, stick to the facts. And, you know, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who's a wonderful man and a wonderful speaker, uh, used to say everybody is entitled to their own views. They're not entitled to their own facts. We normally speak from a common factual foundation, or if we have a disagreement about facts, we, we try to settle it out, say, on climate change. We would normally have a uh, much more rational discussion than we're having now. What people are doing is they're using fake facts to spoil the argument, in effect, or, or discredit uh, solutions so that one of the main reasons that we have so much, it's so difficult to deal with climate change is that our scientists are not divided at all. Less than 2% of our scientists believe that, uh, are, are climate skeptics. 98% of our scientists are cl believers it's a man-made problem. But if you look at the public opinion polls, the public, it's a, you get about 75% of the Democrats, 80% of the Democrats saying it's a serious man-made problem, it's urgent, and it's existential, and you've got about 75 or 80% of the Republicans saying, no, you're, you're cooking the books, it's not true, and we don't have to worry about it all that much. We don't, you know, there's no reason for this urgency. In fact, we're going to spend a lot of money on something we don't need when we should be spending money on things we do need. Well, it's very, very hard to reach bipartisan agreement. When I was first coming into politics, way back in the Nixon years, we had agreement on the nature of the environmental dangers we were facing. And the two parties together, this was during Richard Nixon's presidency, the two parties came together and under his guidance created the Environmental Protection Agency. It was a bipartisan thing, and a fellow named Bill Ruckel's house was the first director, and he was wonderful. He was a Republican, but he also com was completely serious about the environment. Uh, the same thing was true even with Reagan. Reagan went green during his presidency, just as Margaret Thatcher, another conservative, went green during her prime ministership. That doesn't happen anymore. If you're, by definition, if you're on the right, you're not supposed to believe in climate, and you're on the left, you are supposed to believe in climate, and that, that has made it extremely difficult to talk to each other. You can give a great speech, but nobody can be listening. How do you actually reach people? How, I think we're all struggling with the question of, it's not just how you give a speech, how do you listen in a way that's respectful so that you can have a, that you can have a dialogue that you can, and we're struggling with that here at Harvard, we're struggling with it at most institutions.